So let's let's check out the story. And I also thought it was interesting because I have fun little ideas about like fake conspiracy theories that we were talking about this, like the origins of humans oh, on yeah. other planets, oh, right, Venus right. and Mars and other silly ideas. Yeah. So this will be another one of these segments, but let's uh, let's read the story first. The asteroid that hit Earth nearly 13,000 years ago and ended the Pleistocene Pleist Pleistocene Pleistocene era era like I can't pronounce names. You think I pronounce Pleistocene? I've never seen that word. Likely wiped out an ancient civilization in in what is modern day Syria, according to newly discovered evidence. Ah, Syria is where it hit, huh? Hmm. The re the research published in Scientific Reports notes that experts discovered remnants of glass that were created during a high impact event, as well as minerals such as chromium, iron, nickel, and others all of which formed in temperatures higher than 2,200 degrees Celsius, according to a statement from the University of California, Santa Barbara. To help with perspective, such high temperatures would completely melt an automobile in less than a minute, said one of the study's co-authors and UC Santa Barbara Emeritus Professor of Geology James Kennett in a statement. The discovery was made at a site known as Abu Hureira, Hureira which was abandoned roughly 5,000 years ago, known as the Pleistocene Epoch, the most recent ice age is generally defined as starting 2.6 million years ago and ending approximately 11,700 years ago. The glass is believed to have formed from the nearly instantaneous melting of vapor vaporization of regional biomass, soils, and floodplain deposits, followed by instantaneous cooling, according to, to the study. Kennett added, the materials found are extremely rare under normal temperatures, but common during impact events. A single major asteroid impact could not have caused this widely scattered material discovered at Abu Hureira, and that is, and that it was more likely a fragmented comment, the researcher said. Now, I got to pause for a second, because I'm going to tell you what it really was. Bum, bum, bum. You, know, you see what I'm doing with my hands right here? Aliens. You know the meme? Mm. Yeah. Aliens. I see what you're doing. We're going to play Ancient uh, Aliens ancient for this segment. It's yes. going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But let's read this. The largest cometary debris cluster are, are proposed to be capable of causing thousands of air bursts within a span of minutes across one entire hemisphere of Earth. Hmm. Kennett explained, the younger Dryas boundary hypothesis proposed this mechanism to account for the widely dispersed coval materials across more than 8,700 miles of the northern and southern hemispheres. Our Abu Hureira discoveries strongly support a major impact event from such a fragmented comet. Previous studies have focused on the younger Dryas event, a period that saw the extinction of species such as woolly mammoths, bison, and giant sloths, causing global consequences. In October 2019, a study was published that said a brief ice age period occurred roughly 12,800 years ago and was caused by an asteroid impact after researchers found high levels of iridium and platinum in White Pond near Elgin SC. An enormous crater first discovered in 2015, but not officially verified until November 2018, left a 19-mile crater in Greenland and may have caused the disappearance of the Clovis people, a mysterious prehistoric group that vanished without a trace, according to the sun. You know why I find this story really interesting? Why don't you tell us? Do you guys remember that story I was telling you? Where, I don't know if you were there. Remember the story I was telling you about the, the human origins on Venus escaping? Yeah. So this is a silly like kind of joke I thought of, but this fits into my story so perfectly. Go on. Giant impact, nuclear war, a people who mysteriously vanished. So, so here's 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 the kind of like fun uh, story idea I had in lines with like ancient aliens. I like to think about, and this is just for fun. I don't mean this any as, at, at all in a literal sense. But I grew up Catholic. Okay. I went to church. We would read the Bible. We read the stories, and so I'd often think to myself when I started getting older and started becoming much less faith you know, base, I guess, no longer very, like, theistically religious. And I started thinking about how could you explain these stories from the, from the perspective of people with limited understanding of technology, and what could their analog be to modern current events? And then things start to make, you could, you could make them make sense in a scientific context. Like when you hear a story about a great flood and an ark and two of every, of two of every animal, well, on the surface, it doesn't make sense. But when you apply it to the modern context of ocean level rise due to glacial ice melting, mm -hmm. a great flood could occur. An arc, a ship, that's, you know, whatever, straightforward. Yeah. And two of every species, as in like the DNA of two of every species, right? Right. So so here, here's the, the I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you all the ancient aliens fun scenario idea that, again, I'm stressing that I'm not saying is literal, but it's a fun, you know. So here's, here's the, the gag 
sort of uh, idea. Humans originate on Venus. A runaway greenhouse effect causes this sulfuric acid rain, destroys the environment. And then what would happen right now? So this is kind of the, the idea I was having. Like, if we take global warming to their natural conclusion where they say the world is going to end, mm-hmm. f- flooding happens, right? So yeah. what would humans do? Well, like in the movies, we see them mobilize a massive ship. They do it in every movie, you know, about the the end of the earth. Like, water Waterworld? Well, Waterworld was different. That was like thousand, like the after the collapse. But, oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, like uh, 2012 or whatever, they have the big ships. Oh, yeah. So, so let, I'll put it this way. If the world was about to face an imminent disaster due to global warming, like massive flooding, we'd probably build a big spaceship and we'd probably put a bunch of animal seeds and DNA on it. Mm-hmm. Sounds very much like an ark in a flood. Isn't that what Bezos is trying to do? Oh, Bezos? Elon Musk. Is Bezos no. trying to do that? No. Wait, Didn't yeah, you mention is, that? This is a story we ran across right before the show. Oh, yeah, right. Jeff Bezos. Oh, that's right. Idea. A giant <laughs> ship. Trying to make an ark. Yeah. Yeah. See? And then, so check this out. Check this out. Here's my here's my fun idea. Like, I think this would actually be a really cool idea for a short film. Mm-hmm. You have a planet with a runaway grass effect destroying the environment. And then what would happen if right now we are facing this catastrophe? The military would absolutely start implementing emergency procedures. Well, that's what they're doing. But it would be authoritarian 100%. Mm, yeah. It would be the military 100%. is in control. Mm-hmm. And if you want to survive, you do as you're told. And you know what? I can understand that in that context, the apocalypse is happening. And you have a hierarchical military system saying, here's the ships. You get on, help work. Otherwise, we die. That's that's an understandable circumstances. And I'm not talking about like locking people in camps like China does. I'm talking about like American militaries are much more liberal. They're just, you know, hierarchical chain of command. Yeah. So let's say you get the ship built. It's being led by a, you know, five-star general. Mm -hmm. No one questions him. He's in charge. But now Earth is gone. No government, no democracy, no voting. And they're in a ship heading towards Mars. And the ship stays in orbit with all this beautiful technology up in the heavens. And the regular people who who survived, insurance salesmen, (laughs) you know, you got a gardener. They have no idea how any of this stuff works. They couldn't. They can't build a toaster. They can't build a toaster. They can't engineer anything. Mm -hmm. And so they get sent down with basic tech to start terraforming the planet. Mm Mm-hmm. And they have no idea what's going out there. And then I look at this story. About 13,000 years ago, a group of people who vanish and something being turned to glass due to a high impact. What was the story in the Bible where he says, if you turn around, you'll be turned to a pillar of salt? Sodom and Gomorrah. Is that what it is? Yep. Yep. And it happened. Right. And so there was the ancient aliens people say that, like, I've actually watched it. I'm pretty sure it's that crazy up the hair. He's like, aliens. He's like, I don't know if it was actually him, but they mention what could turn you into a pillar of salt from the perspective of someone who doesn't understand technology, a nuclear bomb. It would vaporize you in an instant. Run away from it. Don't turn around or you will turn to a pillar of salt. I mean, you can't really run from the bomb that's going to turn you. If you're if you're standing here. And don't look t- at it. But, but yeah, here's, but here's, here, but here's the explanation. Here's the, hold on. Oh, here's, okay. here, here's the explanation. The explanation is that breaking down translations over long periods of time and translations become literal. You ever you ever take like a phrase and put it into Google Translate and run it through 10 different languages and bring it back to English? No, I haven't done that. You can see how it kind of makes sense, mm-hmm. but doesn't make sense. Totally different. Right. right. So you'll say like, you know, uh, run from the lion and then eventually it turns into like operate a program from a giant cat. And you're like, what does that mean? Yeah. Because run has so many different different you know definitions. It's no longer mm-hmm. makes any sense. Right. So the original idea and the fun idea is that you have this evacuation from one planet with almost Venus, Venus right. almost no technology surviving. They they come to Earth and start seeding it with the life from the, the other planet. Mm-hmm. And then it's, you know, over. that's why you have like these explosive periods of life disappearing. And then they bring down a bunch of regular people who have no idea how any of this technology works, how mm-hmm. nuclear energy works. Yep. They have no idea how weapons work. Like a, a regular fat, you know, take a fat dude on his, on his, you know, in his lounge chair watching football, drop him on a new planet and see what he can do. Yeah. And then you end up with people trying to document what's happening to pass down the information in two or three generations. Their kids are going to have no idea. Like the next kids that are born on that new yeah, planet right. will never even know electric lights exist, cell phones existed, video games existed. They'll, and have, the, a, they'll have an idea of something like magic. Exactly. Where you can touch this thing and light happens. Yep. And their parents will tell them that there were smart men who could create devices that would give you access to all of the information of the universe. Ooh. And they were like, wow. And then to them, in their mind, it's magic. Yeah. And so they write it down in a book. Magic and Thousands happened. of years go by. And it's magic. Yeah. Yeah. So so who are these people who disappeared? The people who were working on the ship, who are coming down as the first terraforming colonists. Mm-hmm. They, 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 there's a nuclear bomb dropped. There's a war and a conflict happening. 
So one of the so I, I started thinking about these ideas and thought it'd be a really cool short film idea, and it would it would borrow from some like mythologies and and religions to try and turn it into a sci-fi, and I imagine it like you have a militaristic ship, the Ark, carrying all the the remnants of the of the techno, of, of you know of Earth as the planet was destroyed, and then after you know twenty or thirty years, you get one of the the commanders saying it's time to implement a democratic government on the new colonies. And he says no, because in his mind, he views it as I must be obeyed. Otherwise, everything will fall apart and everyone will lose their lives and then humanity is wiped out. But mm. the other people are saying, no, it's time. We can't live this way anymore and we need to establish legitimate democratic forms of government. And then a war breaks out and then he nukes the people who you know who oppose him and then takes his people out and they're gone. So it's just, I don't know, fun ideas, mm -hmm. like exploring. They're parked on the uh, dark side of the moon. No, they're gone. Oh, they're on, yeah, it's been 13,000 years, bro. Yeah. Hey, never I don't know how long a ship could last drifting off into space. Like, there was a, a movie I saw where uh, they're on a cruise from mm -hmm. Earth to, I think, Mars. Okay. And then they get an unexpected bombardment of asteroids. Oh. So they do an emergency maneuver, but it is a massive, massive vehicle. Dodging it burns up too much fuel, and they can't recover. And they're on a trajectory that's just drifting, you know, at a, at a high rate of oh, speed. Yeah, what movie was that? But they get, they, they're like, hopefully you know, Earth finds out and launches emergency fuel towards them so they could turn around, but it never happens. And so they end up just drifting for millions of years. And then finally, after like a million years, there's nothing on the ship anymore, but it like comes to an Earth-like planet. So. And then stops. Yeah. Now they're doing like, there's like a comedy show like that, I think, on, on HBO. It was kind of weird because I just watched this movie on Hulu mm -hmm. about the ship drifting in, you know, for, for decades. But now it's like from the makers of Veep, I guess. Hmm. There's a, it's a show. I've seen it. It's a new show, and they're like on a big cruise in space, and it veers off course, and now they're trapped on it. It's supposed to be a comedy. Hmm. Huh. Anyway, you know, I think the ideas of ancient aliens are really funny, but uh, it's just fun stuff to talk about. Whether or not anything is actually real, the answer is probably not, but people love ancient aliens. Yes, they do. But you know what I love about ancient aliens? No, I don't. They open by saying, we do not condone any of the, the ideas, but we are presenting the evidence. Oh, yeah. Evidence. Like, evidence. You put a janitor on TV and called him an alien expert. <laughs> that's not evidence. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show every Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., sometimes an hour or two. And we do have a full live recorded version of the show that includes a lot of comments and smaller segments you probably don't see. If you want to check that out, you can watch live at 8 p.m. Monday through Friday or become a member of this channel. And for five bucks a month, you get full access to all of the recorded podcasts every day after the show. We make them available in the community section of this YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe and stick around for more segments and more shows Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Thanks for hanging out and we will see you all in the next show.